So I'm starting to dig in here, and you can see I've just found um, evidence of my kumara, and I dig it out by hand because if I don't, then I'm bound to cut it. So there's another one there that's looking like quite a nice one. And um, I see I flicked that top off. You can see the little white bit there, but that's okay because we can eat those. What you're looking for for storage is your medium-sized kumara without any um, any cuts. And then we've got a lovely wooden, heavy wooden box that we wrap them up in newspaper so they're not touching each other, or hay or straw. And um, then we we store those and we eat the rest. They, um, we've been having our first... Kumara, oh, the sweetness, and so much different from, oh, look, there's another one hiding in there. It's quite exciting, really. Oh, that's going to be a biggie. Ho, ho, ho. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I do love Kumara. So you can see, um, I'm sort of getting a bit further in, but the earth is quite solid now. And so what I'm doing is I've got this um, cutter, it's a niwashi, and I'm just delicately, see that one wants to come out, um, scraping around to loosen up the soil a wee bit. So I can, um, oops, oh look at that, <laughs> it's like Christmas, I'm wrapping parcels. It's worth taking a little bit of time at this point to get the tubers out cleanly. Now, that's going back that way. Come on, my little brushes. Out you come. Um, I'll put you on hold while I do a little bit more work and um, get these out. So I'm back. I've got um, some of them out. And then I'm just still working on Mr. Fred here. But then as I was working with Mr. Fred, I found these guys. So that's how it's going to be all the way through. So I won't make you hang around for that. And then just remembering um, to lay them out because that sets the sugar. If you don't do that, you'll get um, tasteless kumara, otherwise you'll get very sweet kumara. And see how dry the soil is? Um, that's how they like it. You, when you plant, you just water them for the first week and then pretty much leave them to their own devices. Unless, of course, you've got a drought and then be kind. Okay, bye. Right, so I'm back for just a little uh, catch-up. That's the cash I got out of that mound. Um, because you're placing your slips or your tipu on, on mounds when you're growing them. So that was that, that amount, which I'm really, really pleased about. So now I've cut back more of my um, leaves, ground cover, and I have discovered um, underneath what I'm looking for is um, another mound. So here's my mound. I need to get my shadow out of the way, so I'll... That's better. So underneath the mound, I'm going to have a little look and see. This is where I think, oh, hello, Mr. Worm. There should be some, um, coop. oh, yeah, so here's the the um, indicators. Ah, here we go, right away. And, oh, yeah. So I'll just start digging in this mound and see what I come up with. And I expect that I will get the same amount for that mound and I'll go along because the tubers usually grow underneath where you've planted them. It doesn't mean to say you won't find them in other places, but your main amount will be there. Okay, so this time I really mean it. Goodbye.